Hi all, this is Mr. Yeager. Uh, we are starting uh, to look at the projectile motion, also known as two-dimensional motion today. Um, this is going to be split up into multiple videos. It is a fairly large topic. I'm going to start off with uh, more the basic concepts of two-dimensional motion, and then we're going to slowly add in the two situations where we might have to calculate out what actually happens during this. So again, we are looking at two-dimensional motion, which is also known as projectile motion, and we're going to go from there. We've just completed the vectors, uh, vector uh, mathematics, figuring out components. That is very, very important to this uh, section. It's actually just one more step than what we did back uh, during the kinematic equations. Um, after using the kinematic equations, we just usually have to solve now two equations. Okay. So again, the specific definition is for a two-dimensional motion is now we're looking at something that is moving both horizontally and vertically at the same time, okay? at some point during the flight. It could start off where something's rolling across the table just horizontally, but once it falls, then we're adding a vertical component to it. So we again have technically talked about this already where I, we introduced, um, again, the kinematic equations and solved some problems of, with horizontal motion. And then we added in free fall and did that separately where we had that vertical motion. Now we're going to have both of them together. <coughs> so you can see the examples we have here. Um, playing pool, we actually don't do too many um, basically flat problems where the object goes at an angle off, but that would be more of basically vector mathematics. We will more look at the idea of just throwing a ball to another person, okay? We'll be looking at you know, shooting a cannon at an angle, uh, shooting any, you know, anything like that basically, throwing a water balloon down from a, from a tall building and so forth. So, the biggest thing to get is obviously the red, uh, the words in red down at the bottom. Each dimension of motion can obey, that should not just say can, but will obey basically different equations of motion. Now, I see why it says can because basically it could be the same equation but the numbers we put into it will be different because we have to look at this in terms of x and y. All right? This is a section that a lot of people get afraid of. They go, it's a lot of stuff. I get confused. We just got to try to simplify it down as much as possible and go, what's happening in the x direction? What's happening in the y direction? All right? So with the solving these 2D problems, the first step will be changing that angle velocity, usually a velocity, that angled resultant vector into its components. That's really like the only new step, but it's confusing, is now we have not just one velocity, the velocity that's occurring at an angle, but we have these two component velocities and they both will obey different accelerations, different distances. Uh, the only thing we're going to see is that res that's related between them will be time. So that will be usually the first step, is resolve out that angled velocity. After that, this angled velocity is worthless in the problem. Okay. All right. so you're going to work these problems out as two basically one-dimensional problems. Again, you might have to use two different equations. Again, that uh, will be covered more in a separate uh, video. And then you're going to recombine the results at the end if necessary. There's really only one question or we have to recombine the results at the end. Most of the time, the questions mainly focus on things that happen after we separate the X and Y component apart, and then we look at those independently and answer basically some questions. There is one question that we will recombine at the end. All right. So projectile motion. Okay. A projectile is anything that's being affected by gravity. Okay. It's, it, we're good, like I said, it's only the force of gravity. We will be ignoring air resistance in almost all of these problems. If, you've, if air resistance pops up, it's probably not going to be something you're going to calculate. You might just explain what happens. Okay? But I will say 95% of the time, it's going to be something is shot up into the air at an angle. To tell me how far, how long in the air, and so forth. Ignore air resistance. So the only thing acting on it will be this force of gravity. Okay? Now, I know we haven't maybe specifically talked about forces yet, so think about the acceleration due to gravity. We have talked about that. All right. So basically, again, more definitions. Any object that's basically thrown into the air or dropped into the air 
um, is a projectile. We technically have already done projectiles where we threw an object up in the air and technically also dropped it. When you drop something, it's become a projectile because it's being acted upon by gravity. All right. The path that the projectile will take is called its trajectory. And I know my pen stuff is blocking it. This, the dotted line is your trajectory. The basketball behind that is the projectile. All right. Uh, the trajectory of basically every projectile out there will follow a parabolic shape. It will follow this curved shape. All right. um, the distance that the, pro that the projectile goes is called the range. All right. Now that's obviously something confusing because a lot of people are obviously taking math right now. The range is considered the y-axis. The domain is obviously the x-axis. In physics, we do not have anything called the domain. So we call the distance that it travels from you as the range. Think about if somebody says, go down range, do you start climbing a ladder? Okay, you don't. You, you start walking down across the field. Okay, so that's how we're using it in physics. It's hopefully something that makes more sense. But I understand if you're in the, if you're in the middle of a math class right now, you might be going, wait, is that the Y? And it's not. Okay. So you can see, again, the trajectory of this particular basketball. Right? What it's showing you is showing you the velocity vector at different points. I'll go ahead and tell you the velocity is always pointing. This is a reminder that the next, next testing session will start at 12.15, and students should mm -hmm. make their way there now. Thank you. Hopefully you make it this right. So, yeah, why? The velocity, the vector for velocity is always going to be pointing tangent to the trajectory, tangent to the parabola. Okay. So you can see right here, this is this is tangent to where the parabola at that point. Up here, what do you see happening? The trajectory is obviously flattening out some. Okay. With the basketball at the very top, this object would be having a trajectory straight to the right. There would actually be no vertical component to that. When it goes back to the other side, obviously switches direction, start pointing back down. So that is the resultant velocity is always going to be pointing tangent to any parabolic trajectory. Okay? It's always pointing tangent. So again, with projectile motion, motion, sorry, motion, it's anything that is fired, thrown, or shot, or hurled. Okay. Uh, here's a couple main points that come up immediately. This is actually a very important point. I'll go get both these up. Okay. The horizontal velocity. This is a major, major important point. This is a common question on a test as well. The horizontal velocity of a projectile will remain constant, and we'll go over why in just a minute. But we'll already just say it now. The horizontal velocity will remain constant. It is not accelerated. The acceleration in the x direction is going to be 0 meters per second squared at, for any projectile. Again, we ignore it, uh, wind resistance. The vertical velocity will be accelerated. Do you know by what? Well, think about it. Once something's in the air, what's it being accelerated by? Once you release it, it gets accelerated by gravity. And gravity points which way? Always straight down. Okay? So it's not pointing left and right. That's why there's no horizontal velocity. Gravity, acceleration due to gravity, is only working in the vertical direction. There's a third point here. All right. And we will ignore air resistance again almost always. Again, never mathematically will we ever involve it. So here's again different examples of projectile motion. You dropping, you throwing that object straight up in the air and back, and then you're throwing it at an angle. All of these would be considered projectile motion. Okay. If the person shot it or threw it and threw it off at an angle, that would be also projectile motion. All right. So with one-dimensional projectiles, that's what we did last unit. If you're in regular physics, again in AP, we have just finished with free fall problems. That we've done that. It, the projectile is only moving in the vertical direction. We don't have to worry about any horizontal components. Okay, dropping or throwing something straight up. Okay, 
That's all we did. We calculated the vertical motion. There was no horizontal component. So we've already done that. For two-dimensional motion, again, now it's moving both horizontally and vertically and being accelerated due to gravity. All right? And so now we obviously will have more examples. Throw a softball to somebody else. Fire a cannon horizontally off a cliff. You're going to calculate both vertical and horizontal motion. All right? We'll have to describe that. All right, both vertical and horizontal motion. So, what this is trying to show you is actually a thought experiment that was essentially done by Newton before. He basically was saying if I shoot a cannon horizontally at zero degrees, okay, you can do the perfect horizontal path, and there is no gravity, what would the cannonball do? Well, it should just keep on going straight. And if you look at this as a dot motion diagram, Look at this, the distance between the dots is always the same. So you can tell me that the horizontal velocity is constant and would like to stay constant. All right. So this is what a cannonball would do if fired and if there was no gravity. So this is what it would do in outer space. So if you shoot something in outer space, that object should just keep going straight and straight and straight and straight until it's actually really affected by a gravitational field of a planet. Um, obviously, the one on the right is, is what a cannonball will do on Earth. It'll obviously still move forward. The distance between the, the horizontal distance between all of these is the same. They, all, they are actually equal if I drew them perfectly. All right. But what's happening? Vertically, all right. Vertically, if I look at this as a dot motion diagram, it is accelerating. Those dots are getting farther and farther and farther apart. This is why it follows a parabolic path, because it's going to be curved because the vertical velocity is accelerating. Think back to even displacement time graphs on a, on a graph where it's curved, you have acceleration while the horizontal component keeps doing what it's doing. So the big, one of the big, big things that I know people struggle with is gravity does not affect the horizontal velocity or motion, whatever you want to say. It does not affect it. That is where we want to go. There's no horizontal forces needed to maintain the horizontal motion. Okay? It will keep on moving as it is. But gravity will accelerate it downwards. All right. Oops, that's a very important slide that I skipped. All right. So this is right here is showing you again. It says vertical velocity at the top, and obviously that's important. But let's first look at the horizontal velocity. Actually, let's start with this. Let's look at the real velocity. Both what you're seeing here is you're seeing this object, the spear, that's been shot. Okay? And it's been shot off at a particular angle. Basically, I'm going to draw, I, if I wanted to like illustrate it, I should draw it basically tangent to the parabola. Okay? So this is the real resultant velocity. It's headed off at a very high angle, which you can tell okay, here. This V resultant, I can break up into horizontal and vertical components. Horizontal and vertical components. Obviously doing that, we basically got this number. We're saying the horizontal velocity is 10, the vertical velocity at the beginning, at the beginning is 19.6 meters per second. So let's look at the horizontal velocity throughout the flight. Throughout the whole flight, what does it do? It remains the same. The horizontal velocity is not accelerated. It remains the same the whole time. All right? So if it ever asks, you shoot something off and it has a horizontal velocity of 10 meters per second, what's the velocity at the top? It's 10 meters per second. What's the velocity later on? The horizontal velocity later on? 10 meters per second. All right? If I look at the vertical velocity, what do we see happening as you go up? It gets smaller. Until at the very top, at the very top of the flight, the horizontal velocity, sorry, the vertical velocity is zero meters per second. So let's go back, and then there's a very important point about the top. Why is the velocity decreasing? 
the vertical velocity. Why is it decreasing? That's because if I drew in the acceleration, the acceleration would be downwards negative 10 meters per second squared. Technically here it's 9.8. You can see it decreases by 9.8 every single time. All right? But well, the same idea. All right? The velocity, the vertical velocity and the acceleration are in opposite directions of each other. What does that mean the optic should do as it goes up? It should slow down, which is what we see. On the other side, though, what do we see happen with the vertical velocity? It's getting larger. That's because even at the top, I'm just drawing it right in, in G, the acceleration is still occurring. All right. So what's the acceleration at the very top? It's G. It's 10 meters per second squared. The acceleration the entire time, just like the horizontal velocity, is constant. It's absolutely constant. It's always pointing down which is again why it slows as it goes up, reaches zero velocity, zero vertical velocity at the top, and then speeds up as it goes down because now the acceleration and the velocity are pointing in the same direction, meaning something will speed up. All right? So these are all very important questions. Horizontal velocity stays the same. It stays the same because there is no acceleration horizontally. The acceleration of this the whole time is Gravity is g, negative 10 meters per second squared. I have to make it negative because the object does start up. All right? If I make it positive, that would mean somehow I throw the object up in the air and it shoots up faster into the air. Okay? The other thing that they love to ask, and I love to ask, is tell me about the velocity at the very top of the flight. All right. I have a lot of people tell me there is no velocity at the top of the flight. I think what they're thinking of is when I threw something straight up into the air, the object will stop for a brief moment in time. But what type? But this is all vertical. The thing is, the horizontal velocity never changes. So this projectile still continues moving forward. This is something that, again, I have people at near even the end of you that still, like, you know, only a couple, but still sit there and go, what's the, what's the velocity at the top of the flight? And they'll go zero. So I, and again, I always use this example. So that means you throw a baseball to your friend, and in the middle of the flight, it just hits a force field and falls straight down. I don't think so. Okay? Or it technically is what they usually think is it just stops in midair. I don't think there are ghosts sitting around waiting for the baseballs to be thrown. So the object still has a horizontal component, still moves forward. All right? While at that moment in time, there is no vertical velocity. All right? Classic question. They make you try to solve. They ask what's the velocity at the very top, and they they give you the resultant velocity at the beginning, all you need to find is the horizontal component because, again, that's all that's left at the very top of the flight. So, to review, the horizontal component is constant. It will always be constant. It will not, it will not be accelerated, therefore it's not influenced by gravity. Those are basically redundant points. They're the same points. All right? All right. For the formula that we're going to be using, and I'll probably talk about this in a minute, this is the only formula that will be worthwhile to keep for the horizontal components of velocity and the range. So again, in AP physics, this would, this would just be labeled x, but we, will, we obviously do label them dx and dy, showing, telling me is this the horizontal distance or the vertical distance. All right. So this is called the range. This is the only formula useful for the horizontal component because, let me write out all of the kinematic equations. Delta x equals v naught t plus one half a p squared. Uh, v f squared equals v naught t, v naught squared, sorry, plus two a delta x. And then the last one would be v f equals v naught plus a p. Again, if you're in regular, v naught is v i, initial velocity. Excuse me. The idea that we're doing here is we only, like, this is, this is the general equation. These are the equations you know. These are the equations that will be given to you on any test, any problem, okay? The thing is, these equations can be written as either horizontal equations or vertical equations, which means anything that is a vector in this equation must be denoted with an x or a y. We will not mix up x and y uh, values. Let me rewrite this on a bigger page. Delta x equals v naught t plus one half a t squared. All right. So what I'm saying is, 
I will leave that as delta x, but anything else in this formula that is a vector quantity, I need to include an x after it. So velocity is a vector, so I'm going to include x. T is not, so I leave that as is. A, acceleration, is a vector. Let's just start with this one. Well, let's think about it. What did I say? What is the horizontal acceleration for any projectile? Horizontal. It's zero. There is no horizontal acceleration. So what does that mean? Anywhere where, it's, where you have A, you can get rid of it. So the one-half AT squared goes away, and what am I saying? The distance horizontally that it travels is equal to V naught XT. Okay? The initial velocity. Now the thing is, I'm going to already say this just so it's clear. We write V naught X. The thing is, what did we say about the horizontal velocity? It never changes. So the initial velocity is the same as the final of the velocity, which is the same as the mid-time velocity. It's all the same. So a lot of times we just write this as Vxt. So this is your horizontal range equation. It will not be given to you this way on any test because they, we are all assuming that you can identify that this equation right here comes from that equation up top. Now let me show you the others. They're kind of silly. Let's do the Vf squared equals V naught squared plus 2A delta x. Let's change everything in this equation that's a vector. Well, the velocities are vectors, the acceleration is a vector, and obviously displacement is a vector. I'm going to leave that as delta x. The thing is, horizontal velocity acceleration is zero, which means that goes away. So what's this equation telling you? Vf squared equals V naught squared. Oh, sorry, V naught squared. What does that mean? That just means the initial velocity equals the final velocity. Does the velocity in the horizontal direction change? No. Now watch this. Vf equals V naught plus AT. One more time. X, X, X. T is not X. There's no such thing as an X uh, direction time or Y direction. AX again equals zero. So this goes away. What's this telling you? The final velocity in the X direction equals the initial velocity. All these two equations are telling you is that velocity, horizontal velocity, is constant. So these two equations are completely worthless. There's only one equation that we use de to describe horizontal motion of a projectile, and that is this one, the horizontal range for a projectile. Okay? So that is horizontal motion. For vertical motion, oh, so sorry, here's a picture again. This is again illustrating that the velocity never changes. If I look at that as a dot motion diagram, they're equally spaced dots, constant velocity. The vertical component of velocity, though, undergoes its acceleration. It's going to be accelerated by gravity downwards, 9.8 or 10, again, interchangeable. The primary equation that we'll probably use is the Again, delta x formula, but I'm going to change it to delta y equals v naught t plus one half a t squared. I'll show you in a moment where this comes from. Okay? What I'm trying to say here, though, is dy is telling you the height of the object. Again, in AP physics, we'll just use delta y. It's telling me the, the, uh, the height of the object. x is telling me how far it goes away from me. Again, the subscripts basically represent which, which direction you are going. So if I go back one more time, the vertical direction, okay, the vertical component ha can use pretty much any equation. So we have to be careful here. All right? If I do, delta x equals v naught t plus one half at squared, which is again how it's written on the AP formula sheet. If you're in regular, it'll be d. Let's change everything that's a vector into y. So I'm going to change this now into delta y equals v naught y t plus one-half ay t squared. The thing is, ay is equal to g, because what's accelerating the object? It's gravity. So this will be delta y equals v naught y t plus one-half g t squared. All right? A lot of times, we immediately change that plus sign. Oops. We immediately change that plus sign to a negative sign because g is downward, okay? And again, the projectile will start in the, up the upward direction. So we do start with a positive vertical velocity, usually, usually, all right? 
but you do what you need to do. If you want to keep this as plus and then remember that I need to make g negative, that's fine. Obviously, they do the same things. The other equations will also come into play, so you have to be ready. V naught, Vf squared equals V naught squared plus 2A delta X. Well, this would be Vf y squared equals initial, y, uh, initial velocity in the y direction squared plus 2ay delta y. ay is equal to gravity. This might be used or can be used on any equation that you feel like you need it. Okay, 2g delta y. The last one, I'm going to just do this one faster. vf equals v naught plus at. I'm going to replace a with g. Vfy equals v naught y plus gt. This one would usually be used when you, uh, you use this one when you want to know the vertical velocity. Obviously, the top one can be used too, but generally it's a lot easier just to use this one to figure out the vertical velocity at different moments in time. All right. So again, this is what's showing that, that the horizontal component stays the same, but the downward component, the uh, vertical component, it does accelerate. All right? These components are independent of each other. In all these equations that I just wrote, you don't see me write VFX equals V naught Y plus 2AX delta Y. We do not mix X and Y components ever. And that's what I'll see. I'll see some people sit there and write in G to tell me that that's how fast it's accelerating horizontally. I'll be like, when gravity starts pulling me toward a wall, then we can start using it that way. But for now, we're not going to do it. Okay. So again, this is just another good picture of uh, kind of showing you what is the horizontal and vertical velocity doing. Again, this is a projectile that starts off completely horizontal, so there is no vertical component. V naught y, the initial y would be zero but then immediately does speed up over time, okay? Vertical horizontal velocity does not change, all right? So again, we got to make sure that they, you know, there's two of every one of these vector variables now, but the thing is, AX is always zero, AY is 9.8 or 10, all right? Um, again, here's all your, the different formulas, X formulas, there's only the VXT, but the Y formulas, there could be all of them, okay? As you can see how I wrote them all out there. All right? And zero-launch projectile is for another day. All right, thank you very much.